percent of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. It's moving the whole revolution forward. Got it. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of 24 Hours Crypto. To get right into today's video, I am so excited to film this one. I can't believe we're doing this again. But are stablecoins going to make XRP obsolete? I mean, listen, you got David Schwartz coming out here tweeting. I'm going to go over it in a moment. And now everybody is going crazy after what he said about potentially stablecoins, you know, may replace XRP. I know it's scary. It's scary. I know I get it. But in today's episode, I'm going to tell you, you have nothing to worry about. You need to understand what XRP is designed to do and what stable coins are designed to do. And in today's episode, I'm going to give you a very clear explanation on that. And I want you guys to let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And guess what? If you're scared, sell. Not financial advice, but sell. It's very simple. There's there's hundreds of digital coins out there, right? Sell. There's so much better ones. But don't come crying back when it's at 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 dollars. That's all I gotta say. Remember, Bitcoin went from less in pennies to sixty-two thousand dollars and does not serve any use case on this planet. Do you understand how important that statement is right there? Bitcoin does not provide anything. Like I can't wrap my head around how people don't understand that and what XRP has been designed to do and what Ripple has been doing since inception. Think about how aggressive Ripple has been in this ecosystem. They never backpedal. It's always been up, up, up. Growth, right? Just growth. Anyhow, enough of the talking. But remember, yesterday, I was going to upload a video yesterday. I'll tell you that right now. But my mind just went insane. There was so much about the information in that video. I couldn't do it. It was way too much information. Uh, I think we're going to upload that today for a double header smash that like button if you guys want to see it. But remember liquidity. Please, please understand this. But we think over the long run, it's going to be that combination of deep liquidity. There's enough liquidity there. And when I say liquidity, what I mean is depth of the market. But we think over the long run, it's going to be that combination of deep liquidity. Once you pull all that liquidity, you can create more efficient pricing structures. And remember what was set on CNBC when the Bitcoin ETF was approved. The day the Bitcoin ETF was approved, I want to make this very clear for the individuals that missed it. This is what was said on CNBC the day after, or the day of that Bitcoin approval. And, uh, and I like to use the example, if uh, the Bank of Mitsubishi in Toko, Tokyo needs to transfer $100 million worth of yen to the New York branch and convert it to dollars, you need $100 million worth of yen in Tokyo and $100 million worth of dollars in New York. You're tying up $200 million in capital. If you can attach that to a coin, it's simultaneously so the bank frees up half the capital. That's a big deal. But we haven't made that jump yet. Yeah, but it, it looks like it's coming, isn't it? I think so. Okay. And how do you not understand this? Like, they're, like I'm telling you, the, the fact that the price of XRP has remained where it's at, that a lot of people are distracted. And I find it comical. I find it comical. But listen to what David Schwartz says here. Only XRP can be used to pay transaction fees on the XRPL. Everyone who transacts must have XRP to pay those fees. XRP is the only asset that every account can hold and that has no counterparty or jurisdiction and cannot be frozen or clawed back. XRP has structural advantages on XRPL due to the features like auto bridging. And this is where people went crazy. And this is what people are only reading. And they're not really thinking, they're just reading. But if stablecoins can do most of what XRP does better than XRP can, then XRP will lose to one or more stablecoins no matter what happens with RLUSD. And let's read that again before I break it down. If a stablecoin can do most of what XRP does better 
then XRP can, then XRP will lose to one or more stable coins, no matter what happens with RLUSD. And this is a very bold statement, and this is also a very, very diplomatic way for him to come out and say that there is competition in this space. Okay, you need to understand that. I mean, that statement right there, I'm not fearful, and I'm going to tell you exactly why right here. There are some key points that he mentioned. Only XRP can be used to pay transaction fees on the XRP ledger. This means that regardless of the assets being transacted, XRP is essential for the network operations. So when we have these monstrous banks come onto the XRP ledger, which we know 100% they're coming, and if you disagree with that, then you can just click off, leave a dislike, unsubscribe from the channel because you have no reason to be here if you don't believe in that. Every user must hold XRP to engage with the XRP ledger, ensuring it continues demand and utility. Features like auto bridging allow XRP to seamlessly connect various assets and currencies on the XRP ledger, enhancing liquidity and reducing costs. So now let's go compare stablecoins versus XRP. If a stablecoin could perform all of XRP's functions more efficiently, it might pose a serious threat to XRP's dominance. But let's do a little reality check here. Because stablecoins inherently have limitations that prevent them from fully surpassing XRP. And that is a fact. Traditional cross-border payments, you guys all know, require banks to hold foreign currencies in Nostro, our money held by you, and Vostro, your money held by us. And it's pretty much tying up capital and creating inefficiencies. Uh, and I'd like to use the example, if uh, the Bank of Mitsubishi in Toko, Tokyo needs to transfer $100 million worth of yen to the New York branch and convert it to dollars, you need $100 million worth of yen in Tokyo and $100 million worth of dollars in New York. You're tying up $200 million in capital. If you can attach that to a coin, it's simultaneously so the bank frees up half the capital. That's a big deal. But we haven't made that jump yet. Yeah, but it, it looks like it's coming, isn't it? I think so. Okay. So when you're using multiple stable coins pegged to different currencies, it's, it's pretty much re it reintroduces the need to hold various assets similar to maintaining numerous Nostra Vostra accounts. XRP acts as a universal bridge currency, eliminating the need to hold multiple currencies. It allows for real-time settlement across borders without associated capital requirements. So realistically, these baskets of even CBDCs, because they're essentially stable coins, but they're central bank stable coins, you know, specifically tied central bank digital currencies. But even these stable coins, you don't need to have billions and trillions of dollars in liquidity in each of those currencies, because that is the problem that XRP is solving, right? Getting into those exotic corridors. And the higher the price, the more value you could move. It's pretty much like water flowing. Think about value just flowing seamlessly, nonstop, right? And a lot of people don't understand that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But David's remarks should not worry you one bit. I mean, I sit there and I laugh because a lot of people jump the gun and they only read the second paragraph. Like it, it, it boggles my mind, but here's the thing. The ones that know what you're holding, I mean, we just go as, as days go by. We know, like, I know some of you guys may think it's cocky or you, how can you be so sure? You can't say a hundred percent. You can't say this. You can't say that. But listen, in the past we've met, we've said so many things, you know, that came true with saying 100% at the end of each statement. And it's just a matter of time for XRP. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of like when it's gonna happen. And we are getting really close. Like again, forget everything and ask yourself why XRP is being targeted by the SEC and why they dragged it on for this many years. Come on. Like, you know, do you, do you understand? Do you, like, can you think for a moment?
You know, can you think for yourself and just understand how big this is and all the information that we provide on this channel and just put everything into a big snowball, right? And before I end the video, I'm going to tell you guys something very important. I was going to make a video on this. I was going to publish this on my members only. But I met someone, and I need to tell you guys this, because the individual that I met was very credible and was in the days, like, like we're talking like Bitcoin under, you know, $10, $5, Ethereum wasn't even out yet. They were there too. And I'm not naming names, 100% credible. This is my first time actually meeting somebody that paid that much for those things, okay? So I'm not gonna get too much into detail, but the amount of knowledge that this individual is speaking and uh, relaying on to me was incredible. And listen, listen, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna lie. Like I kind of, I was like tearing up because some of the stuff that he was talking about uh, USDT and all that stuff, insanity. My heart started pumping. I'm like, there's no way this is even happening. I, I mean, I was with him for a little bit and then I found out all this information about him and then I, everything was legit. This, this guy was the real deal. But anyhow, the biggest takeaway that I got from here, regardless of all the information that he gave me, I, I cannot relay that, relay that on to you. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make this, oh, tell us, tell us. No, um, this is not it. I, I will never talk about it. But this part I will talk about when Ripple came up. Oh, man, his, his reaction was incredible. I'll tell you that right now. I'll tell you that right now. He's, and then and he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, Ripple? Mm-hmm. He's like, why do you think they're going after them? He's like, those guys are going to be massive. And I'm getting like little shivers right now or goosebumps on my arms if you guys could see this. But I'm telling you, I will never, ever forget the look on his face, the way he turned around because we were having another conversation and Ripple popped up. And then he kind of took that out of that conversation and like made a little side comment on it, which was remarkable. I mean, this guy, it was, it's crazy. I'm not trying to hype anybody up. Okay, listen. We know what we hold. We know the utility of XRP. We know the problem it solves. We know how it works. And it's just a matter of time. That's all I got to say. Ethereum, dollar from a dollar to $2,500. I mean, we got the biggest Ponzi scheme in history still running, and that is Tether. Uh, Solana, think about it. It was pretty much started with a fraudster through FTX. Like, think about these assets and the origins of it, right? And then think about XRP and what they have been doing since inception, creating a network. And that network is a network of trust that they have built over time. Because without trust in the financial ecosystem, how are you going to introduce your enterprise grade solutions to them? Think about it. And oh man, I know we're right. 100%. There's no questioning that. And whenever I see an airhead in the comment section below, I pray for you. I'm kidding. I don't pray for you. Why the heck would I want to pray for you? You stay in that peasant mindset for the rest of your lives because myself and every single one of you guys that are watching that have been telling your close ones about crypto for years and you may sound stupid and look stupid by now, but I'm telling you, you guys are going to live rent free in their heads for the rest of their lives. That's it. That is it. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video. I do appreciate every single one of you guys. With the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. <laughs> I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.